We've defined chemical equilibrium so far as the situation in which the rates of the forward and reverse reactions are equal. And we often represent this using, for example, forward and reverse arrows of the same length to indicate a system at equilibrium. But reaction rates depend on rate constants, that's lowercase k values, right, and concentrations according to the rate law. So the rate law for a chemical reaction relates the rate to the rate constant and concentrations raised to some power, right? But these concentrations raised to powers, terms like this, appear in the equilibrium expression. And so that leads us to suspect that there might be a relationship between the rate constants for forward and reverse processes and the equilibrium constant. And in fact, there is, provided we're looking at an elementary step that's reversible. It's important for us to specify that we're looking at elementary steps here because the rate laws for multi-step reactions will have reaction orders, these exponents, that are not necessarily equal to the stoichiometric coefficients. But as we've seen before, in the equilibrium constant expression, in the products over reactants idea, these exponents on the concentration or pressure terms, this lowercase p and lowercase r, these are the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation. So what we're going to derive here in a second applies only for reversible processes that are elementary steps whose rate laws have reaction orders that match the stoichiometric coefficients for the step. For an elementary step, we can write the rate law directly using the stoichiometric coefficients on the reactants in the balanced chemical equation. So if we think about a hypothetical reaction in which one mole of A reacts with one mole of B to form one mole of C and one mole of D, as long as we know already that this is an elementary step, as long as this is given, we can write the rate law straight away. The rate law for the forward reaction is Kf, and I'm going to use F to represent the forward direction, times the concentration of A raised to the first power, times the concentration of B raised to the first power, where those exponents come from these stoichiometric coefficients. In fact, we can do the same for the reverse process. I'm going to write this in blue and use the letter R to represent the reverse reaction. The rate for the reverse reaction is going to be equal, and I'll actually add a little R subscript there to the rate, and a little F subscript here for the forward rate. The rate of the reverse reaction is going to be equal to the rate constant for the reverse process, which is going to be a different number from K sub F. The forward and reverse rate constants will not necessarily be equal times the concentrations of the reactants for the reverse process, C and D, raised to their stoichiometric coefficients, which in this case are both 1. So we have the concentration of C raised to the first power and the concentration of D raised to the first power in this reverse reaction rate law. Now for the magical moment where we specify that the system is in equilibrium. If the system is at chemical equilibrium, then we can write immediately using the definition of chemical equilibrium that the rate of the forward reaction is equal to the rate of the reverse reaction. And we can then substitute in these expressions on the right hand side for the forward and reverse rates. Kf times the concentration of A at equilibrium times the concentration of B at equilibrium must be equal to Kr times the concentration of C at equilibrium times the concentration of D at equilibrium. And if we collect all the concentration terms on one side, notice what happens. On the left hand side we have a ratio of the rate constants, Kf divided by Kr. On the right hand side we end up with a ratio of the concentrations. Concentration of C times the concentration of D divided by the reactant concentrations. Concentration of A times the concentration of B. But based on the way we defined the equilibrium constant, this right-hand side of the equation is simply equal to the equilibrium constant, right, since we specified from the outset that the system is at equilibrium. So these are by definition equilibrium concentrations, and this is equal to the value of big K, capital K, the equilibrium constant. What this shows us is that for a single elementary step, Remember, that was key. That allowed us to write the rate laws straight away without any experimental information, just from 
the coefficients in the balanced chemical equation, for a single elementary step, we can write that the equilibrium constant, capital K or KEQ, is equal to the rate constant for the forward reaction divided by the rate constant for the reverse reaction. The great thing about this is that if we know, say, the equilibrium constant and the rate of the forward reaction, we can immediately know the rate of the reverse reaction by applying this equation. It also helps us see how the balance of rate constants dictates the position of equilibrium. For a forward reaction that's relatively fast in the sense that its rate constant is large, we're going to have k much greater than 1 and the products are going to be favored. For a process that has a very rapid reverse reaction in the sense that the rate constant for the reverse process is relatively large, k is going to end up small and the reactants are going to be favored at equilibrium. This slide just reiterates the idea k, big K, the equilibrium constant, k or kc, is equal to the ratio of the forward rate constant and the reverse rate constant for an elementary step whose rate laws in the forward and reverse directions, by definition, reflect the stoichiometric coefficients in the balanced chemical equation for the step. One last thing to mention here is that catalysts do not alter the value of k. This is important to think about when you're working with catalysts. A catalyst cannot alter how favored a reaction is. That's actually the domain of thermodynamics, which is distinct from the kinetics of the reaction. The catalyst doesn't mess with the thermodynamics since it doesn't change what the reactants and products are. The value of K we can ultimately trace back to the standard free energy change for the reaction, right? But that's independent of everything except what the reactants are, and what the products are, and so since the catalyst doesn't change the identities of these two things, then the value of K is unaffected by the introduction of a catalyst. However, that may seem a little bit odd given what we've just said about the equilibrium constant being equal to the ratio of the forward and reverse rate constants. It is true that the catalyst does change the forward and reverse rate constants. By lowering the activation energy, the catalyst speeds up the reaction. But here's the trick with this. A catalyst acts to speed up both the forward and reverse processes. Notice that the forward process is sped up by a certain amount, but the reverse process is also sped up by that same amount since the decrease in activation energy, what's labeled delta Ea here in this graph, is the same for both the forward and reverse reactions. That means that the overall value of K is unaffected. And we can show this for a fairly simple hypothetical example. Say we use a catalyst that increases the speed of the forward reaction five times. It's going to have the same effect on the rate constant for the reverse reaction, such that the two factors of five, the two speeding factors, if you like, will cancel one another. And in the catalyzed condition, we'll still have the equilibrium constant equal to the same value. Bottom line is that a catalyst cannot alter the value of K, and it can't make a reaction that's thermodynamically unfavorable go. And that's really the conceptual idea underpinning this. Kinetics and thermodynamics are two separate issues. Kinetics deals with what goes on between the reactants and products, while thermodynamics deals only with the identities of the reactants and products. A figure we saw previously in the lesson on kinetics talked about the fact that kinetics deals with this region of the reaction profile diagram between the reactants and products. Kinetics is here, but the domain of thermodynamics, which includes equilibrium and delta G zero and all of that good stuff, is a completely separate portion of the reaction profile diagram.